and it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and of all of us. And as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us. hate oppression, but always fear the oppressed. You see, I loved her. It was love at first sight, at last sight, at ever and ever sight. My mind to me a kingdom is, such perfect joy therein I find, as far exceeds all earthly bliss that God or nature hath assigned. Lord Copper sat alone in Sprendry. I'm not going to be able to do it, sorry. If you're struggling to think of a Christmas gift, pop to your local bookshop because there's always something to buy. I'm Nash Robbins of the Much Ado Bookshop, and if you're a member of a book club, we'd like to suggest that you read Juliet Nicholson's book, The Perfect Summer. Now, Daphne de Bonnier's Rebecca. What a fantastic book. I read this as a teenager, and I fell in love with it. The first book I'm going to talk about is Mouse. Uh, Mouse is a Pulitzer Prize winning book by the author Art Spiegelman. I love this. It's one of my favorite things in the shop. It's a bust of T.S. Eliot, done by the sculptor Jacob Epstein in 1951. There are six known copies. This is the only one really in private hands, though one is owned by Mrs. Elliot, Elliot's widow, and she never lets it out of sight because every night she says she gives him a kiss before she goes to bed. This is a Russian Afghan soldier's helmet given to me by the chief of police of central Moscow. It weighs a staggering 25 pounds. When I put the first lines onto the paper, it's almost like the foundations of a house, you know. If they aren't in the right position, you know the house is going to be no good. Nearly everything I've produced has, has been uh, created here. Dickens is supposed to have created 20,000 characters in the course of his career. And I think the really amazing characters are not the extensive ones, but the ones who just enter into the book momentarily, like the young man who says Eska at the Veneering's dinner. He's only in one sentence, but he's unforgettable. That is genius. This is the first, what I would say, serious book that Dickens ever wrote. The initial remit is that Dickens did not think much of the poor law. This here is an incredibly rare page of the Pickwick Papers itself, as written by Dickens here in this room, in this very house, with a quill very much like this one, if not this one, under the eyes of his mascot, Monkey. Uh, while he was writing, he was incredibly animated. Uh, sometimes he would leap up from the table and look at himself in the mirror because like an actor, he would become possessed by the characters. And my last book is also political. It's a collection of quotations by politicians, things they wish they'd never said. It's called Mission Accomplished, assembled by Matthew Paris and Phil Mason. And among them is a wonderful boob by Charlie Kennedy, the former Liberal Democrat leader. He'd just done a press announcement on health policy, and at the end of it he said, that's enough health, I need a fag. Well said, Charlie. The best thriller writer working at the moment, in my opinion, is Lee Child. His stories grab you at the start and just won't let go. And this is a lovely snowy story about three little bears who become snow bears out in the snow, and everybody will have an opinion on this. The only thing that seems to be missing from this book, really, is a good dollop of sex. My creative day starts at 6 o'clock in the evening when I pour myself a massive vodka martini with four olives, that's my ritual. So I work on a, an old-fashioned electronic typewriter which gets pulled up onto my lap, it gets put onto a, 
a sort of flat thing like this. Um, and I work a lot on a, on a notebook as well. I just, I do a lot in longhand. Tend to be in here if I'm writing seriously from about eight o'clock at night until three o'clock in the morning, unless I'm really, really writing, in which case I'll have taken far too much caffeine and will be slightly unhinged and I'll be in here for two or three days. Um, between about seven in the morning and ten in the morning I just sort of drink the coffee and, and something it sort of opens up something in my brain and I can write incredibly well for three hours and then at about ten o'clock in the morning it begins to drain away and for the rest of the day I'm desperately trying to pull anything decent out of my brain. More of a cockpit than a room really it's a tiny little room and um, I'm surrounded by stuff that inspires me I'm surrounded by books that I love music that I love and um, Usually, I'll write a thousand words a day and um, be finished by about lunchtime. For years, I worked in a cafe. It was the only vegetarian cafe for ages in Glasgow called the Third Eye Centre. And I went there and it was the kind of place you could sit with one cup of coffee all day and you could go on with work. And there was the diversion of all the other people in the cafe, which keeps you ticking over and keeps you amused. A lot of writing is dull, it's boring, it's you by yourself. And the stimulating environment was good. But now, when we came here, I picked this room and it was because of the view. If somebody took it all away and I was left with a white room again, uh, that would be quite nice. I would just have to go on and start producing some more. So this is where I spend my working life and um, come to think of it, I'd better get on with it right now. I don't know, it's kind of incredible, isn't it, to think that my finger must have switched that on and off hundreds of times as a kid and miraculously I've still got it. Um, 